We're gonna talk about two things, at least in my presentation. We have a lot of things to tell you, but I mean, in my presentation, I wanna spend time hopefully telling you about two things. One is, how we're thinking about Gen AI. I'm sure all of you have been hearing about AI and Gen AI, but we're gonna show you something different. Another way Apple Silicon leads the industry is with the Neural Engine, which the industry calls an NPU. The Neural Engine is an IP block in the chip dedicated to the acceleration of AI workload. I'm excited to introduce the Intel Gaudi 3 AI Accelerator for the first time. So you ready? Intel Gaudi 3. Today we're 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 going to dive a little bit into the ARM processors and talk a little bit more about the space that is being dominated by Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. We're going to talk about the Snapdragon Elite X. That's not a chip that goes into mobile phones. That is a chip designed specifically for PCs. Yeah, that's what we're, <laughs> this is going to shake things up. Uh, yes. Snapdragon has had CPUs that have gone into the PCs before. Yeah, this is, uh, and who's behind it? Qualcomm. They're the company that designs and markets the uh, Snapdragon. So I guess, first of all, before we jump into this, what what is this not about? So we're not going to be talking about the ability to do faster downloads, being able to do 4K video and 8K and 16K. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that Elite X is promising, and there's plenty of those promises. But I think what we should talk about is the shift in the paradigm. Um, talking about where your laptop lasts, the laptop battery charge lasts not just seven or eight hours, but two or three days uh, <laughs> before you need to have an actual charge. The other one is, yes, AI seamlessly integrates into your workflow. And, I mean, that's coming with almost every application that's being written right now. AI is doing all kinds of nice and wonderful things, including GIMP uh, is even has AI things that will generate images for you. So, yeah, so the, the future, at least on Windows, it does. I don't know if those features are yet in the Linux side. But the future of Qualcomm is that they're betting on is the Snapdragon Elite X will be their weapon of choice for taking on uh, taking on Intel and AMD. I think to some degree they're hoping to to dent Nvidia too. I, I don't think they're they are have any delusions of grandeur to think that uh, that the onboard chip would be able to take on. A 1490 or a 4090 or a 5090, whenever that comes. So I, I watched a um, I watched a video recently uh, that Linus put out. I think it was around January or so of this year, where he sat down and talked about AI. Write code. I mean, this is not anything new at all. We don't write machine code anymore. We don't even write assembler. And now we're moving on from C to Rust. So I don't see this as something as revolutionary as all the news <laughs> talk is every day about AI. It's not an area I obviously work with. I, I'm still very low level. I, I got into kernels because I love the low level hardware details. And that's why I'm still there. But, but so you, you say you expect this 
can help people write code, this can help people get started. But then if we look at the previous conversation and the, the challenges around code reviews and maintaining, so do you think that large language models will get to the point that they can help us review code, that they can help maintain such I hope, I hope, because that's certainly one of the areas where, which I see them really being able to shine, to find the obvious stupid bugs. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he, he sees it being more like that, but... Uh, for, now, remember, he's talking about the kernel. He's not talking about the applications. So, yeah, that, that's what he does. But I did notice one thing about Linus, though. He looks like he's getting close to retirement. He has that he has that look in his eye of, I don't really want to be here anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of taking orders from people. Yeah, I, been there, done that. I can understand that. It does, it does get to a point where you just go, by arm on the desktop as one thing arm on mobile phones of course we already know that's been successful so arm dominates those that space and has for years they power billions of smartphones but what does their uh, market share look like on the pc well this might surprise you so based on the announcement today i'm very pleased to tell you that there is a new sheriff in town the Orion CPU is the new leader on mobile computing, period. It's been designed. <laughs> it's been designed by Qualcomm from the ground up with one thing in mind. Can we have unprecedented level of performance at extremely low power? That's what we do. And create a technology that could actually bring to reality all those these devices that we, that we envision is gonna be part of how our future, I think, experience, including of, of mobile computing. The Elite X is designed for a PC. Is this designed for the desktop as well as the laptop? So it's, a, it's meant for demanding tasks by creators, gamers, artists that are doing commercial art, 3D rendering, that need raw performance without compromise. So that's kind of the that's that's kind of the strategy they're going with the Elite X. There is a lot of vendors that are lining up to produce the uh, uh, the laptops with the Elite X CPU. One of them is Dell and that is on their X series uh, the 13 inch uh, laptop. Uh, I saw that they are offering uh, two of the drag, uh, Snapdragon SKUs. One of them is the high end, and one of them is kind of a mid tier, I think. But you also have HP is releasing uh, Lenovo. There's uh, Asus and Acer are releasing, and those are the only ones that I have seen uh, announcements for so far. I'm sure there will be more. So this is going to be, this is shaping up to be a classic battle between not only different companies, but different complete architectures. So this is going to get really interesting. And one of the things that uh, obviously it's caused a panic in Apple because they, they announced their M4 chip as part of a rollout on their iPad Pro series of tablets. M4 can deliver the same performance as M2 using just half the power. Now, when we compare it to the latest PC chip in a thin and light laptop, M4 can deliver the same performance using just a quarter of the power. And I thought it was, as you saw from the beginning, I actually did a double take and it was like, it's like, uh, it performs the same as the M2 and M3, but it uses less power. And he said that twice. He, they said it twice. And I was like, what? This is rivaling traditional x86 processors. And in fact, one of the benchmarks that Cristiano Arman, the CEO of Qualcomm, showed was a benchmark that they did against the Intel. Our Orion CPU exceeds the M2 Max. In It's faster than any leading ARM compatible competitor in a single threaded CPU performance. Take a photo, take a photo. <laughs> I'm sure you want to take the next photo too. Yeah. 
if you want to match, if you want to match that performance, he can do with 30% less power. Isn't that incredible? Okay, but if we say that is the new CPU leader for mobile computing, period, uh, I have to show you more. So it's faster than leading x86 CPU. Single-threaded CPU performance of the core exceeds the i9-13980HX, which is designed for high-performance gaming device. Okay, get ready for the next photo. That's going to be good. <laughs> and if you want to match the performance, he does a 70% less power. So uh, some of the features that this chip has, it is a SOC, so uh, system on a chip, SOC. Hardware point of view, the big difference is the CPU itself. There are other differences in other IPs, uh, but the CPU is a custom CPU that's done by Qualcomm. This is the first generation of, uh, of the custom CPU, which we call as Orion. Uh, and this is the first chip to have this, uh, this chip in it, uh, this uh, CPU in it. So the Exelite uh, comes with uh, 12 identical Orion cores. Um, these are um, split into three clusters of four CPUs each. Uh, they can go all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz. Um, they support single and dual core boost of uh, up to 4.3 gigahertz, which means that if, if you have just one CPU active in the, in the cluster or one CPU in each of the clusters, two clusters active, it can go all the way up to 4.3 uh, gigahertz. Uh, it's got a quite a capable uh, GPU, Adreno GPU, which can do up to 4.6 teraflops. NPU for AI use cases, which can do up to 45 tops. Uh, standard LPDDR5X memory, uh, all the way up to 64 GB, 16-bit 16, 16 channel. Uh, standard storage options for uh, SD, NVMe, as well as uh, UFS. Uh, this one out here has uh, NVMe, SSD, or PCIe. Uh, display primary interfaces supported are DP and EDP. And uh, for video, we have a new video decode block, uh, which can do a whole bunch of encode decode options, including uh, the AV1 encode, which is new. And then we have standard camera ISP solution, uh, uh, standard uh, Qualcomm audio solution, and then the cellular modem and the Wi-Fi uh, is over external PCIe with an M.2 card. When you have SOC chips, you eliminate a lot of the problems that we as on Linux have had because the different support chips come from different vendors. And that's where you run into issues with device drivers. So when you have things like Wi-Fi support and memory controller support, your I.O. controllers are on the CPU and you also have your graphics processor on the CPU, then all of those things get a heck of a lot easier to integrate into the Linux kernel because it's, you're not depending on somebody else to do the code. And Qualcomm does have a team. They've had a team working on Linux for quite a number of years. In terms of kernel uh, upstream status, uh, we started off posting patches for these chips quite late into 6.7. So there was very little that got merged in 6.7, but we followed it up with 6.8, 6.9. So in the last couple of releases, there's been a decent amount of support that's already merged. We have uh, pretty much all the infrastructure pieces around clock, spin control, um, power domains, interconnect, all of these merged. There's uh, SMMU support, system cache. Uh, both the uh, reference devices that we use for our development, which is this, the CRD and another device, the QCP, both of these have support upstream. We have all the multimedia clocks merged, a bunch of fire drivers, and uh, the primary storage interface on these, which is NVMe or PCIe. Uh, we also have uh, the DSPs being brought out of reset uh, and uh, the firmware, firmware loaded on, on these for uh, some of the audio use cases. But this is, like I said, it's, it's like uh, we are halfway there in terms of 
of having full Linux support for these. There's quite a lot of things that is missing, and that's primarily our focus going forward over the next few merge windows to get all of this support merged in, uh, in mainline. Uh, so top of our list is uh, primary display, which is uh, over uh, EDP. And then uh, some of the power management things like getting the dynamic scaling working with CPU freq and memory uh, DCPS. DCPS stands for dynamic clock and voltage scaling. Uh, that's primarily the technique we use to scale the, the DDR as well as the caches. Um, and then uh, the low power modes through suspend resume, system wide suspend resume, and then camera and video are the big uh, missing pieces for now. They, uh, and oddly enough, they're working with Debian 12. So <clears throat> if you go out to Debian 12 SID on the repos, that is where all the activity is pl taking place. Uh, not only for the kernel development, but also all of the packages that surround it uh, to make you know that chip perform, turn on the audio, turn on the Wi-Fi, turn on the Bluetooth. So all of those things are there, and that's where they're doing it. So anyway, I, the only thing is that I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But I think this might blow the lid off the PC marketplace. Uh, is at least in the laptop. You know, laptops are the most popular thing for people to buy. It's going to make things interesting, that's for sure. And I think Snapdragon Elite X is going to be at the forefront of this initial transformation. It's going to be interesting to see what Intel and AMD do going down the road. So I, I don't know about you, but I'm always, I always get kind of excited whenever there's there's just that little guy that comes up and whacks Goliath in the face with a stone. So anyway, that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye for now.